Bhavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadara Sri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare We're reading Krishna book and we're on chapter number uh, 82, is it? Chapter number 82, entitled Lord Krishna and Balaram meet the inhabitants of Vrindavan. So Lord Krishna came to Kurukshetra and he met with all the people from Vrindavan. They'd all come from Vrindavan to observe the solar eclipse and also to be with Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna was able to meet with the people from Vrindavan after many years. He'd been he'd he'd grown up in Vrindavan, but when he was a young man he went to Mathura. And then from Mathura he went to Dwarka. So he married many wives and he came with all of his wives. He brought them all to Kurukshetra. And he also brought Vasudev and Devaki and all of the different family members. They all came there to Kurukshetra. So it was arranged, Lord Krishna was able to meet with the gopis and he was able to talk to them because he, he, they had only known Krishna when he was a young boy. They'd known him as a cowherd boy in Vrindavan, but now he was a prince. <laughs> And so the gopis, they had very great, intense love for Lord Krishna, and they were always feeling the separation from Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna wants to give them instruction and to pacify them because they're meeting him only after such a long time. So Lord Krishna spoke philosophical, he spoke philosophy to them and he told them to understand him that, that he told the gopis that they should understand everything with a philosophical mind. And Lord Krishna told them that if he said, if you understand everything philosophically, then you will always be with me. No, 
you understand that you're always with me. Yes, right. And, and Krishna told them then, if you remember that you're always with me, then there'll be no reason for you to lament in feeling separation from me. So this important instruction given by Lord Krishna to the gopis can be used by every devotee. The whole philosophy is considered on the basis of the principle that everything is inconceivably one and different. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says he is present everywhere. But then he says, I'm present everywhere in my impersonal form. So everything, and then he said, everything exists in, in him. But the Krishna says, I'm not personally present everywhere. The whole material world is nothing but, Krishna, but the energy of Lord Krishna. And the energy of Krishna is not different from Krishna. So when we have this kind of consciousness, this, when we have this absolute consciousness or Krishna consciousness, <coughs> then we will never be separated from Krishna. But if we're not Krishna conscious, then we will feel separation from Krishna. So the process of devotional service is to help us to become Krishna conscious. And if a devotee is fortunate, if he's lucky enough, he will understand that the material energy is not separate from Krishna. And then he can use the material energy in the service of Krishna. But if we're not Krishna conscious, if we forget about Krishna, then Oh, oh, then we'll, we'll put, we'll put ourselves in the position of the enjoyer of the material world. But 
and in this way we will remain in the material world. So this is stated in the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna says that the living entity may, is forced, we're forced to act by the material energy. And we think we are the supreme enjoyer. We think we ourselves are the supreme. But if the devotee knows, if we remember that the, 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 the form of Krishna in the temple, the deity, is the same as Krishna, then we will be in good Krishna consciousness. And whatever service we do in the temple for the deity is considered direct service to Krishna himself. The temple and the, all the paraphernalia in the temple and all the food offered to the deity and everything there in relation with the temple is not separate from Krishna. So we have to follow the rules and regulations given by the Acharyas. Even though we're in the material world, we can understand the supreme guidance, we can understand Krishna, we can realize Krishna fully. But we need the guidance of the Acharyas. So the gopis were instructed by Krishna in the philosophy of how everything is one and different. So in this way they remained in, always in Krishna consciousness. And they got liberation from all material contamination. So the living entity who presents himself, if the living entity thinks he's the enjoyer of the material world, then that, then he's in ignorance. Yeah. In that condition he is called Jiva Kosha, meaning is imprisoned by the false ego. So not only the gopis, but anyone who follows Krishna's instructions can get immediately freed from the material energy. Not only the gopis, but 
Krishna 的指示，便可立刻摆脱物质能量的掣肘。Um, if, if a person is Krishna conscious, then he won't be affected by false ego. He will use everything for Krishna's service. And he's never separated at any time from Krishna. So the gopis prayed to Krishna, that dear Krishna. They prayed to Krishna that from your navel came the lotus flower, which was the birthplace of Brahma. And Brahma is considered the creator. So the gopis say nobody can understand your glories or your opulence. It's a mystery. Your glories and opulence are a mystery even to the biggest philosophers. Even the masters of all yoga powers cannot understand you. Haribo? Guru Mani? Yeah. Okay. Hare Krishna. Oh yeah, can you? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Okay. okay. So. Uh, oh. So the gopis are praying to Krishna about how Brahma was born from the lotus flower which came from his navel. And nobody can understand you, even the great yogis or great philosophers. But even a conditioned soul who is in the who has fallen into the well of ignorance material existence, even that, that person can take shelter of your lotus feet. And because he takes shelter of your lotus feet, he is guaranteed to be delivered from material life. So the gopis 
continued praying to Krishna, they said, we are always busy in our family affairs. Huh? So the gopi, the gopis are talking to Krishna, they said to Krishna, they said, we're always busy in our family life. So they prayed to Krishna, they said, please remain in our hearts just like the sun. That would be your greatest mercy. So gopis are always liberated souls because they're always Krishna conscious. They only pretended to be entangled in family life. But and because of their separation from Krishna, Krishna may have asked them to to, to return with him to Dwarka. But the people of Vrindavan, like the gopis, they had no interest in going with Krishna to Dwarka. Yeah, they wanted to remain in Vrindavan and feel the presence of Krishna there. And in Vrindavan, they can feel the presence of Krishna in every step in their life. And the, so the gopis, they invited Krishna to come back to Vrindavan. And so this, this emotion, this mood of the gopis, this is the principle of Lord Chaitanya's teaching. And the Rathiatra festival, which Lord Chaitanya used to take, take part in, that was the process of taking Krishna back to Vrindavan. So Srimati Radharani refused to go with Krishna to Dwarka. She didn't want to enjoy his company in the atmosphere of all great kings and opulence. She 
Radharani only wants to enjoy Krishna's company in Vrindavan. So Lord Krishna is always attracted to the gopis. He never likes to go away from Vrindavan. And the, the gopis and all the people of Vrindavan, they remain fully satisfied in Krishna consciousness. So this is the end of the chapter 82. So we'll go on to chapter number 83, which is called Draupadi meets Krishna's Queens. So we're still in Kurukshetra, and there were many visitors who came to see Krishna, and among them were the Pandavas, who came headed by Maharaj Yudhisthira. So after talking with the gopis, and bestowing upon them the greatest benediction, Lord Krishna welcomed Maharaj Yudhisthira and all the relatives. So, Lord Krishna inquired from them about their situation. He wants to know, is everything auspicious? So Prabhupada explains that if somebody is always seeing the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, then there cannot be any Inauspiciousness. But Lord Krishna was asking Maharaj Yudhisthira about this, it was a matter of etiquette, it was out of etiquette Krishna was asking, is everything all right, is everything auspicious? So Maharaj Yudhisthira was very happy to be received in that way. And he says to Lord Krishna, he said the great personalities and devotees who are in Krishna consciousness, they always think of your of Lord Krishna's lotus feet and they're always satisfied fully. They taste the nectar of bliss just by remembering, just by being with Krishna. So sometimes the nectar which they are drinking sometimes comes out of their mouth and it's even sprinkled onto the 
other people. So that nectar, that is the narrations about the transcendental activities of Lord Krishna. So this nectar which comes from the mouth of a devotee is very powerful. And if somebody is fortunate, if they're very lucky, they, they will drink it. And in that way he gets immediately freed from birth and death. Our material existence is because of our forgetfulness of Krishna. But that darkness in our heart is immediately removed if one is fortunate to hear about Lord Krishna's glories. So Maharaj Yudhisthir says to Krishna, he said, where is that person who is oh, he said, how is it possible that if somebody is all the time hearing about your glorious activities, how could there be anything inauspicious for them? Maharaj Yudhisthira said, We are fully surrendered unto you. We have no other shelter but your lotus feet. Maharaj Yudhisthira said, and we're always confident of good of our good fortune. <coughs> Maharaj Yudhisthira says to Krishna, You are the ocean of unlimited knowledge and transcendental bliss. There are three phases of material life. They are called wakefulness, sleep and deep sleep. But these things cannot exist when people are Krishna conscious. All the bad reactions are taken away by Krishna consciousness. The Maharaj Yudhisthira says to Krishna, you are the ultimate destination for all liberated people. And it's only out of your own independent will that you have come to this earth. 
出于自己的独立意志、意愿，来到了这个，来到了这个地球。You came to this earth by the, by your own internal potency, Yoga Maya. 你以自己的内在能量 ，Yoga Maya 降临。And you came to re-establish the Vedic principles of life. You, you appeared just like an ordinary human being. But you are the supreme person. There cannot be any bad luck for for anybody who is surrendered unto you. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I just had to do something. I'm freezing here. Somebody put the AC on. I'll let, so when Lord Krishna was busy meeting different visitors, uh, they all came offering prayers to Krishna. So at that time, the female members of the Kuru dynasty and the Yadu dynasty took the opportunity to meet with each other. Kuru and Yadu dynasty's members took the opportunity to meet with each other. Hmm. And they began to talk of Lord Krishna's uh, transcendental pastimes with each other. Hmm. So Draupadi, uh, she asked. The wives of Lord Krishna. She asked them some very confidential questions. She says to the different wives. She says to Rukmini and Badra. And Jambavati, and then Satya, and Satya Bama, Kalindi, and Saibia, Mitravinda, Lakshmana. She addresses all these different people. They're all, oh, and, and and even Rohini. And all the different wives of Lord Krishna, and she asked them, "Will you please tell us how Lord Krishna accepted you as his wives and married you?" So 
Yeah, we know that Krishna married you uh, just like ordinary human beings get married. Lord Krishna accepted you also as his wife. So Rukmini, she is the chief of Lord Krishna's queens. She replied first. And she tells Draupadi, she said, I was supposed to marry King Sishupal and princes like Jarasandha, they all wanted that I should marry Sishupal. And at the time of my marriage, they were all there, ready to fight with anybody who would come to try to stop my marriage. But the Supreme Lord Krishna he kidnapped me the way a lion takes away a lamb from the flock. So Rukmini said, this wasn't a very wonderful thing for Krishna. Anybody, if anybody claims to be a hero or a king in this world, then they're subordinate, they're under the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. All the kings touch their helmets to the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. So Rukmini says to Draupadi, she said, it's my eternal desire that life after life I will be engaged in the service of Lord Krishna. He is the reservoir of all pleasure and beauty. So this is my only desire and ambition in life. Hmm. So the next queen began to speak. The next queen is Satyabhama. And she says to Draupadi, she tells about her father, that her father was very upset by the death of his brother, Prashena. And he had fought, he had made a mistake. He accused Lord Krishna of killing Prasena and stealing the Shamantaka jewel. Actually, the jewel had been taken by Jambavan. So in order to, to show his actual pure character, to impress upon them Lord Krishna's pure character, 
Lord Krishna came and he fought with Jambavan and he got back the Sharmantaka jewel and delivered it to Satyabhama's father. So when when Satyabhama's foot father got back the Shamantaka jewel, he was very ashamed and he felt sorry for accusing Lord Krishna of stealing it and And he also understood that he was wrong about accusing Krishna of killing his brother. So after he got back the Shamantaka jewel, then Satyabhama's father wanted to do something to make up for his mistake. So although actually, although he promised to marry his daughter Satyabhama to other people, he decided to give Satyabhama to Lord Krishna to be his wife. And Satyabhama said, in this way I was accepted as his maidservant and wife. Alright, so we'll stop here tonight. Are there any questions? Satyasha Well, it depends on the individual. It doesn't have to be any difference because it's all service for Krishna. If we are distributing prasadam to people and giving them the holy name, distributing books, it's also very pleasing to Lord Krishna. And taking part in Rath Yatra is yeah, it's nice to meditate about taking Lord Krishna to Vrindavan, but we have to think how to give Vrindavan to other people, not just for our own self, but try to give Vrindavan to other people. Mm. Okay. Oh. 
Is there any other question? Uh, you, the, the two are raising their hands. Uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glory to Prabhupada. Um, we studied that there are three phases of material life, wakefulness, sleep and deep sleep. And uh, it does not exist uh, if we are in Krishna consciousness. Uh, I couldn't really understand this Guru Maharaj. Uh, yes, well... Deep sleep, you know, can understand deep sleep, right? When you're in deep sleep, you, you have no consciousness, you don't know where what you're doing, you're dreaming, we're just, you know, in some other place. Yeah. Everything is... So then, the, then other kinds of sleep, you know, maybe not so deep as a, a deep sleep, but sleeping it's also it's a kind of ignorance you see because the consciousness is suppressed we're not aware of what we're doing we're just sleeping we're just in the modes of nature we're in the lower modes yeah but yes. and, and waking waking you know even waking in material life waking but you're awake to the bodily needs you're only thinking, we're only thinking of the material duties and the material life. We're only thinking about the body, our interests are only in eating and sleeping. You know, we're not concerned about the real goal of life. So this is the three phases of material life. The sleeping, the deep sleeping and the waking. It, it's a question of consciousness, even though we may be awake, Actually, we're like a sleeping person. So we 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 often sing a song where they say, "Jeev jago, Jeev jago, wake up, sleeping soul," because we are souls, but we are asleep about our identity as souls. We're only thinking of the body. You get it? Yes. Yeah, I get it now, Guru. But a uh, uh, fully Krishna conscious person, does he also have a deep sleep? Like, uh, it is different. Yes, it's definitely different. A fully Krishna conscious person, he may sleep, but he, he won't sleep. He won't forget Krishna. If he's fully Krishna conscious, that even in his sleep, he'll be thinking of Krishna and remembering Krishna. And sometimes we hear devotees even in their sleep, they're chanting Hare Krishna. Sometimes when, that, you know, staying in the ashram, in the temple, the other, and we'll hear sometimes some brahmacharya, a new devotee, he's so t and into chanting that even in his sleep he'll be chanting Hare Krishna. And Prabhupada recommends we read the books before we sleep, then we can think more about Krishna. Yes, so we sleep, but the sleeping is not, doesn't mean forgetfulness of Krishna. And ultimately, the fully liberated souls, they practically don't sleep. You know, Prabhupada was only sleeping a couple of hours a night. And the Goswamis, practically, they didn't sleep. They'd be awake all the time chanting. Lord Chaitanya also, he told the devotees, we're not going to sleep anymore. We're just going to chant all night. All day and night, we'll just chant. No, we no need to sleep anymore. <laughs> Prabhupada used to say, sleep is like death. And so he would always, he would always be telling us, don't sleep. <laughs> don't sleep, especially in the class when we're having Bhagavatam class. Don't sleep. Yeah, right. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. How, how can we like um, avoid uh, sleeping more? Because even if I sleep well, sometimes I sleep uh, while chanting. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah, of course, but we should be careful. You shouldn't sleep when you're chanting. You should be alert. Maybe, yeah, maybe we, it's like uh, we are eating more or uh, maybe we are thinking so many material things in the mind. That's why we need more sleep or how to, how can we initially improve Well, this Well, we have to regulate the sleeping. Don't sleep too much, don't sleep too little. You have to regulate your sleeping. Prabhupada recommends we should sleep six, six hours a day. He said six hours should be enough. And we're, we're, we're not encouraged to sleep during the daytime. You should sleep at night. Sleeping in the daytime is not very good. Okay. So try to regulate this sleeping business, you know, that's it. You regulate it and, mm. and gradually you can, we can begin to reduce it a little. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. So six, probably, but so some, some people may need more sleep. You have to, it's different for different people. Some people need to sleep more and some people can sleep less. Some people may need seven hours. Some people may even need eight hours to sleep. But don't sleep more. Try to, try to regulate the sleeping. Because that sleeping, you should understand the sleeping, that is usually forgetfulness of Krishna. Yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, in, if we don't sleep well, then now we can we cannot concentrate on chanting. We cannot have a quality chanting, right? Right. Yeah, you we have, have to regulate. You, you have to get your rest. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Thank you. Do you want to translate any of that? Guru Mani? Yes. Uh,他问这个问题是 是没有知觉的。然后睡眠是一类型态。这时候呢，我们都没有意识到我们是在睡眠的属于低等的形态当中。我们，然后当我们清醒的时候呢，我们身体，我们在看，我们在照顾身体的需求，就处在物质生活当
太多，不要太少。当我们规范了自己的睡眠的时候呢，就能减少，就能逐渐减少睡眠，不鼓励白天睡觉，白天睡觉不好。OK， good。All right. So, any other question there? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Lopapapad. Guru Dev, my question is about one shloka of Shri Mad Bhagavatam. This is one, one, two, third. This is translation. Uh, in the beginning of the material creation, that absolute personality of Godhead, Vasudeva, in his transcendental position, created the energies of cause and effect by his own internal energy. So my first question about uh, the shloka is, uh, is Vasudeva, uh, Prabhupada noticed that uh, the absolute personality of Godhead here is Vasudeva. So is Vasudeva an expansion of uh, Lord Krishna? Yes. Who, uh -huh, who created these energies, of course, and effect? Yeah. Uh -huh, yes. Okay, and my second question uh, is, um, are these energies, of course, and, and the effect are personified because uh, uh, these terms are uh, used very often in Srimad Bhagavatam. And can you understand, uh, well, uh, sorry, can you uh, explain please um, in more details about these energies of cause and effects? I know, as far as I know, they're not personified. Mm -hmm. But we understand Lord Krishna is the cause of all causes. Mm -hmm. Right? Is the cause. As described in the first verse of the Brahma Samhita, that Krishna is the cause of all causes. So the, the, there's a cause of everything, and then the, whatever happens will be some effect. <laughs> right? The, so, so cause is the, fir the first thing. The, something happens, it, something takes place, and then there'll be some effect some result of that. Just like Krishna is the cause of creation. So with creation then comes about, then the living entities come and life begins and life develops. So that's the effect. So these are the two phases of energy, the cause and the effect. Mm -hmm. Yes, Gurudev. But they're not, pun I've never heard that they're ever personified. Uh -huh. Yes, Gurudev, thank you. Krishna himself is the cause and effect. So they're personified in Lord Krishna. You could say Krishna is the personification of everything. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, then. Guru Mani, any other ha question? Yeah. yeah. To, sh shall I translate? Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, just a simple translation. The question is, don't let the first and second day of the world and the third of the world be confused. The world is in the beginning. 绝对的人格守神花四对吧？嗯，便在超然的状态中，用内在能量创造因果能量。但问题是，这个花四对吧，是不是的扩展？嗯，是的，不是的扩展。另外一个是，关于这个是因果能量是不是人格的化身？嗯，不是，不是呢，是一切的人格化身。还有，怎么理解这个因果能量？因为就是就像一切，它有一个创造，嗯，呃，一个事情事物发生了，它就一定会有个结果。因为 Krishna 它是创造的源头，所以它的结果便是创造了生命。Okay. 
Yeah. Hi, hi, you eager went here? Who? Sangita. Sangita, you never should hire. Is it Sugita Sangha or Sangita? Oh, well, it's up to you, you know, you have to consider if it's possible, if you can get your own refrigerator, then it's that's the best thing, but, and, you know, and when Prabhupada first went to America, Prabhupada used to use things, he used to keep things and he was staying with people who were not vegetarian and they had meat in the fridge and Prabhupada would use things from the fridge. But that was in the beginning when he first went to America. So he didn't like to do that forever, but you can tolerate that for some time, but it's not good for, for a long time. Guru Mani. Yeah. Mm. 那个他们搬走了 用牛粪清理 那我就用牛粪清理一下吧<笑> 
们有人有证据吗？哦，没有了，现在。没有，没有问题啊。是的，顾主席。Okay, well, man, then, then we'll just finish here, then, good money. Yes, yes, my friend. Thank you very much for translation. Thank all the devotees for participation. So I hope you all have a good week and take care. Thank you, ma'am. Mm. Thank you, ma'am. 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 Thank you, ma'am.